Hi, welcome to Ranger Country. I'm Peter. And I'm Lawrence. And we're here today to have a look at the new FX DRS. We are. Range of Rifles. This is something quite special, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I know obviously FX bring out a lot of guns. A lot of guns. A lot, yeah. a lot of guns. Yeah. Um, but this one is unique. It I certainly think, is. I, I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's hyping it up too much. No. Obviously we're gonna go into it and we're gonna see what it actually is, what it comes with, what it's like, and how it shoots as well. Um so yeah. Well, let's have a look at it. Let's, let's get into it and uh, see what we can say about it. Now, Lawrence, first thing we notice about this DRS rifle from FX, no cylinder. Yeah, it's very clever, isn't it? Well, clever is one word, yeah. Now, we've seen it recently in the Remington Vault. Yes, yeah, that's um, a... Fairly uh, entry level rifle. How long's that been out? That's been out a few months now. We've been selling the a few months. Yeah. Um, interesting concept with the air cylinder actually around the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's a very very clever little system. You've got pressurized air basically around the barrel. And my maximum fill on this is two thirty bar, isn't it? So you've yeah. got two hundred and thirty bar cylinder of air around the barrel. Now I have read in the in the press people questioning whether your point of impact is going to change depending on pressure the pressure in that air, in that cylinder. Okay. I don't know. But we yeah. don't know. We haven't been we haven't had them long enough to, to find out. I'd have thought FX would have tested for that. Yeah. We, but, but we don't know. So that that's that's just sort of the the word on the grapevine, isn't it? And yeah. Uh, so that's at this end. I know we've got a couple of vent holes in there, which I'd have thought are um, safeguard, overpressure safeguards. I don't think, with it being one at each end, I don't think they're a, a breather hole for the reg. I think the reg is going to be further down. Yeah. So obviously it is regulated. Um, yeah, well, starting on that end, then we have yep. got half inch UNF thread. Yep. Nice, sexy little uh, thread protector on there. Quite a fat little barrel. Yes. Now we we had a play with this earlier, didn't we? And we put a Hogan decimator on it. Yeah. Because that's all we had in the studio. Basically, it's yeah. quite a loud rifle. And that's got a bit of a bark, is not it? Yeah. Because it's not shrouded, you'd, you'd expect that to be shrouded, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because of the size of the barrel. Yeah. Normally we used to it being a little bit quieter. Yeah. But it's not. So it's got a bit of a bark. And we put a Hogan decimator on. Changed it completely. Looked stupid. Yeah. Because it's because it the silence was narrower than the And it was tapered, thread. yeah. So it was sort of big, big barrel, big cylinder, gap, taper, smaller mod. Yeah. I think if you were to put something like a uh, A&M Twink yep. with this, I think I think that would look a bit better, wouldn't it? Which something featured a bit better. in my review of a dozen or so moderators that I did a while back. So I'm sure we'll post a link in one of the corners to that now. Mm, definitely. I mean, we, we love we love A and M mods, don't we? Yeah, we really do. Yep. But carrying on about the rifle. Yep. So it's, I suppose, looks is more in handling, but it's looks like a proper rifle. It's you've got the thick barrel that would normally be like a varmint uh, heavy barrel in a you know centerfire rifle, and then you've got what looks like a magazine well underneath. And then that's the plenum for, for the air, that's the pre-chamber before it comes out the end of the barrel, which makes it look very sexy. It does. Now, immediately, this, this strikes me, T12? Yeah. FX T12? The old FX T12. The, the stock feels very much FX T12, doesn't it? Yes. Well, it's the same feel as in the Wildcat. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very light. Yeah. And no weight to it at all. I mean, this gun... Weighing in with this scope on it, it's quite a big hawk scope, isn't it? Vantage 30, wide angle. Uh, 2.7 kilo? With the scope, yeah. yeah Allegedly 2.2 without. Yeah. But that sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. Does it make it a little bit lighter when you've got a mount hanging off the back end of the gun? So I'll lift this up for the, for the camera to see. 
that is where I've had to now that well that is where I've had to put it without obviously how do I explain that? Scopes we have a series of scopes in the studio here. They're all preset with mounts on, so we can just put it on, clamp it up, done, zero the gun, and go. So this particular scope, that's just how far apart the mounts are set. And on this particular rifle, it's hanging halfway off the back of the off the back of the rail. It's clamped, it's clamped on fine. There's no recoil to the rifle. It's fine. It looks a bit stupid, but it's fine. Now, the reason that you had to move it back that far was because... That brings us into the magazines. We've got the large mags, haven't we? Yes. The, 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 the guns are that new that they haven't got the proper magazines out to us, and they haven't got instruction manuals out yes. for us either. So th that's how new the guns are. Allegedly, they should have all come with the new mini mags, which will be 16 rounds in 177 and 14 in 22. But instead, this first batch, uh, we've only had a few in, this first, ba first batch, and we don't know when the mini mags are coming in. Uh, so we're, we're stuck with these until. Uh, these are 22 round in 177 and 18 in 22, which is what we've got here, uh, the 22 magazine. So hence, it's quite, quite, quite tall. You, mm. need a, you need your scope quite high or sort of not on the saddle of the scope. I know with day, some day states we have to put extra high mounts on to clear the new 13 shot mag, but yeah. that takes a biscuit, that one, doesn't it? That is, yeah. that is a big boy. Yes. So, this scope is mounted on a, it's a 9 to 11 mil rail, so it's standard standardized air gun rail. Um, there's not, not much really to report on that. Uh, it's side lever. I, don't, I think probably the FXT12 was probably one of the last bolt actions that they've done. Mm. They've all been side lever since, as far as the top of my head. It's by far the better one, though, isn't it? Yeah. Side lever. Their side lever is really smooth. You get a nice little click to cock it. Uh, really smooth, and it works really well with the magazine. They're brilliant. Mm. A little safety catch there, I noticed as well, just below that. Uh... Yeah, standard FX safety. Mm. Just stops the uh, trigger seals moving back. Yeah. Mm. Now the stock itself, they do three stock options. They do this one, which is the, this is the synthetic. It's Easy hard, for you to say. Harder to say than it should have been. Um, and then they do two walnuts. They do a standard walnut, and they do a really nice walnut. Mm. We haven't seen the two walnuts yet, as of re as of recording. I'm sure they'll be very very nice. I have. Oh, you have. Oh, I okay. have. Uh, is that the British shooting show? No, that was at the. Trade show in Germany last okay. Sunday. IWA, the big big European one. Yeah, week last Sunday. Yeah, um, I would say now we'll get into that in handling. I think the stock's quite short, but we'll get in, get that in get into that in handling. Now, are you thinking that because this is far back? No, I'm not. Well, yeah, as you considered that. Yeah. Well, no, no. But anyway, we'll get get into that. <laughs> um, the rifle is regulated, as with I think all FXs. Uh, but you don't have a regulator gauge, on, unlike most of them. You've just got this single gauge on the side. Nice and easy to use, nice and easy to see. It's not colour-coded or anything, um, but it's nice big numbers. You don't either. really need a red gauge, though, do you? No, it's just to make sure that it's not going wrong. Yeah. The rifle fills to 230 bar. We've only filled it to 200 bar today. Um, it's just... I think you've probably only got that much air so in it. So shot count. Yes. We were, we were questioning, you were questioning the shot count that FX quote, weren't you? They say 60 in the 2.2. As, as I say, we've got the 2.2 here. 60 in the 2.2, but that's the export model. So that's uh, 30, High power. 30 foot pound, 30, mm. 35 foot pound. I got from 200 bar down to the 100 bar that it's at now, uh, 56 shots. In two two, so two thirty bar. It's probably going to be eighty shots, something like that. So I question their FAC numbers, but obviously we haven't got an FAC here. Mm. Okay. So it's going to be something like eighty, ninety, and two two, seventy or eighty, one seven seven, something like that. Quite a decent shot count for such a light rifle. Yeah. That's not bad, is it? Now they're, they're quoting 208 cc's cylinder. Yeah, so it's quite a small Quite cylinder. small, yeah. Because you think, oh, it's a big tube. 
but you have got a barrel in the middle there, haven't you? And that's yeah. going to be probably 11 mil, something like that. Yeah, so that's sort of Walther RM8 territory in terms of size of cylinder. Because they're 220, I think, 230. You get a lot more out of an RM8 though, don't you? Yeah. Sure can. Yeah. Okay, puts into perspective. Now, we've got a little aperture on the side there, haven't we? A little hole. Yes. There's a, yeah. Obviously, I think when we first got this, I was looking around and thought, where the hell do you fill it? Normally in the end there, wouldn't you? You'd go straight to the end. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but this one is very clever, different. Different, it's unique. That is different as well, isn't it? Look at the size of that. And people say length doesn't matter, but wow, look at that. That it's is... not very thick, though, is it? <laughs> no, you work with what you've got. Uh, so that is that length because it has to push all the way into the side of the rifle. Because of the quirk of how it's how it's set up and you, in fact you've got no cylinder, they've had to release this special uh, fill probe, which unfortunately is another one that we've obviously got to stock down our range. Um, this new fill probe, very slender, very long. I bet the old quick coupler connected to that nearly bottomed out on the... Uh... You know I tried that? Yeah. I tried flicking it a couple of uh, the obviously when we connect it into the air. Yeah. Quick connector goes around there and it's on like a little quick connect collar thing. I tried pulling it back and slamming it and trying to click it on. And it wouldn't quickly. touch it. Wouldn't touch it. Couldn't touch it. Okay. So yes, it's close. It looks like it's with a would. standard yeah, let's say that with a standard FX uh fill pro. Yeah. It was close, but it won't mark the stock. Or it okay. didn't mark the stock. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that, that does look very strange, doesn't it? Very. Handed, ambidextrous. It's ambidextrous stock. Obviously, yeah. it's right-handed right bolt. It's on the correct side for a right-handed person. It's on the right. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Adjustable trigger. So I can see that yeah. blade is turned slightly. Yeah. So that's adjustable. Yeah. And we've got some more little adjustments in there. Now, as I said before, we haven't had the manual because they haven't produced one yet. We haven't. Uh... So the two holes, there's one hole in there and one screw at the back, isn't there? But you're going to have to take the trigger guard off, I think, to be able to get in there to adjust your trigger. You've got one, two, three adjustments, I think. Okay. So it's a, I mean, yeah, it's a fully adjustable trigger. Yeah. We haven't even mentioned price point or even rough price point. Obviously, we're still in the features section. I guess it will come in more into the conclusion, but I think we need to mention it. Now, FX are usually quite expensive, aren't they? Yeah, they're a, they're a, they're a quality brand. They Thousand twelve hundred plus. Yeah, but these are something else, aren't they? The synthetic one, as of time of recording, seven fifty ish. There it is. Okay, you get that and decent scope sub grand. Quite comfortable. Very good, very good scope. Yeah. The walnut's obviously quite a bit more, and then the, the really expensive walnut is uh, uh, on top again. I think that's about the 1100 mark, um, 1150. But it's a nice, sexy walnut at that point. But yes, fully adjustable trigger, um, unique uh, in on, on barrel reservoir. Yeah, regulated. almost unique. Yes. Compared to a, Reming, a yeah. Chinese made Remington. Yeah. yeah. So now I know you zeroed it earlier, didn't you? Yeah. How did you find that? Was that all right? Especially with your custom. <laughs> My uh, custom scope, scope setup. Yeah. Um, it was. What did you think to shoot in it? It was quite loud. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. Quite, quite a short rifle. Um, and there's obviously with, with no moderator, and you put a moderator on it's fine. Did you say you think it's quite short? I think it's quite short in the stock. Even without the scope being there, I think it's very, very short in the, in the stock. Just pass the tape measure up. Let's have, a, let's have a quick measure the length of pull. This is where I get, yeah, 13 and a half, 13 and a quarter. Yeah. Or we normally 14 and quarter, something like that. Oh, my, probably an inch longer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It feels it. The age old technique of seeing if it's right, the, the right length of pull for you, is uh, put it up against your forearm. It's like a shotgun, isn't it? 
Yeah, the old the old sort of forearm, the old yeah. uh, shotgun technique. So that's into my into my the the crook of my elbow, and sort of where your where your finger rests naturally is where the trigger ought to be. So it's it's a yeah, it's about an inch too short for me. If it was a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously with it being a rifle. Now it's... the good thing about that being a little tad shorter, not that it looks it, but it suited Junior as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Again, adds to the versatility. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean I if you hadn't said that, I wouldn't have thought it was I wouldn't have thought it was any shorter, to be honest. Your eyes a bit close to it. Just a little bit. <laughs> that, that's where I've had to put the scope for it being for to, to clear the magazine. So my head's on the scope. Far too far too close. Yeah. But yes, anyway, so it's a little bit of a gripe. So you can you can live with it. It'll be interesting when we get the little mags. Yeah. What what it what it's like then. And push it forward a bit more. Yeah. That will be uh... Or if you just had, like you say, extra high mounts and you put it where it should be. Yeah. Yeah. What else is there to say about it? Well, it's light. It's it is short. very light. It is very light. It it feels quality, doesn't it? Yes, it really does. Non-adjustable pad. It's quite cushioned there, isn't it, for a, for an air rifle? It it does feel quality. It feels FX quality. Yeah, and you you, you know it's you, you know it's not a um, you know it's not a Remington board. Yeah. But it's all the edges are smooth. All, all the I do like their synthetic stocks. Yeah, they're nice, it, aren't they? Yeah, and the I mean, going back, I keep going back to the uh, the the T twelve. I ever say it's a light thing. You hardly knew that you were holding it. Very popular for uh, people who who were a bit restricted in strength. Devil's advocate. The only thing I don't like about the really lightweight rifle is when you come to sit down on a range, or you've got you've got the front end rested. Um, it feels very floaty. Um, Especially, I suppose, when you're pulling on that side lever, you get a lot of movement in the gun. You're, you're twisting the, the gun. Yeah, yeah. Because it's so light, that moves you around quite a bit. Mm. But yes, it's quite. It's it's easy to move it around, which makes it hard for it to sit still. Which, yeah, sitting down the range, it's it it is detrimental to it. I prefer something a little bit heavier for down the range, but that's obviously not what this is for. No. It's for taking it out. Um, you just love that really long pill prop, don't you? Yeah. I'd feel better if they had a blanking plug in there. Yeah. That's a bit of a, a muck magnet. But then that would add dust. 20 quid to the price, wouldn't it? 20 pence. So, yeah. No, it's FX, so it'd add 20, 20 quid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have a dust plug, like you say. I think it needs one. I think he, uh, you might get screw fix. I was think a screw fix pencil thicker than that. <laughs> Stick that in. Jam a screw fix pencil. Yeah. Okay. Shall we shoot the thing? Let's have a go. Let's see what it see what it's like, and uh, yeah, let's okay. see what you're like. So we've had a good look over the FX DRS. Now Lance is going to have a go at shooting it. Uh, just see what we can. Uh, produce and how his interesting mounts pay off for him. So we'll say I have... Here we go. No. What? Uh, I've intentionally zeroed the scope low. Okay. Uh, because it's 2-2, two -two, I've got 10 shots in the magazine. Uh, um, I've, I've filled it with 10 pallets rather than the full 18. Uh, 10 2 2 pallets is going to be a big hole. So if I put them all through, if I zero it for the center, in theory, if I blow the center out, I'm not going to have an aim point. So I've zeroed it low so I can keep the center as my aim point every time. Here's a question. Did I cock it or not? Well, punk, are you feeling lucky? That's probably a 
over your head, that one, isn't it? No, it's uh, Clint Eastwood, isn't it? Well done. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it in black and white? No, I don't think so. No. The lightness of this is sort of not in its favour because uh, it makes it a bit floaty. Lightness. Mm. Okay. So when we're talking about light effects, something like a, a T12 would spring to mind. Oh, with that sort of light? Oops. That's... So is that you moving the first few when they've gone over to the right, do you think? Uh, possibly. Okay. Yeah, possibly. Um, so it's quite floaty in the shoulder. Um, I've done my best to try and get to sit comfortably with it. Um, well, you've got three over to the right, haven't you, on that group? Mm. Apart from that, there's it's quite, a, quite a blob there. That... Yeah, I thought that sort of thumbnail group sort of size. Which for the two twos is not bad at all. No. Especially, especially with my uh, rather funky scope mounting system. In fact, it's half off at the back. But that's because, as we've mentioned, the magazine's so big. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Well, that's not too bad, is it, for you? That's not too bad Brilliant. at all. No. Uh, no, it's not. Um, these are the two, uh, two, two air arms to blow fields. Um, now, there is one thing as well that we ought to add, that these guns, even though we shoot with them with air arms, we haven't done a test on them, have we? No. And found which pallet they're like. These are just one of our go-to pallets. Yep. For 2-2, two -two, I think, air arms every time. Yeah, they're generally the most accurate across most guns. Yeah. This particular gun may not like them. They're um, a good standard. Yeah. There's probably a lot a lot better for this gun than, yeah. than, than those. So we will add that little bit. I know for 177s, we we like air arms, Diablo field again. We also like QAS heavies, streamlined. Yeah. They are particularly good. But obviously they're currently 177 only. So. Currently. Anyway, we're not getting yes. to that. No. Let's get into a conclusion on the FX DRS. Now we've talked about it. We've, we've gone over its features. You've shot it. It wasn't too bad, the grouping that you've that you produced? No. Let's see, let's, it. let's see what we let's see what we really think about it in the conclusion. So Lawrence, mm -hmm. what did tell me what you make of it. I think, I mean what does this compare to? What was what does this compare with? Right. It's Good sub question. Sub grand uh, or sub eight hundred quid as it is. Even, as it even sub eight hundred quid, yeah. And you said how the walnuts are how much? 850 or 950 and then 1150 I think something like that 11 something or something or other a, a good amount more it takes it up a price bracket almost so air arms s510 yeah well ultimate sporter is the only only air arms that you can compare it with really that it, that it well it's the only regulated yeah it's the only, yeah it's the only one that sells. I was thinking <laughs> I was thinking of a standard s510 yeah well, it's, yeah. It's yeah. far better than S510, isn't it? It's it's regged, um, better shot count, it's lighter. Cheaper than HW100? Yes. Yeah, That's I suppose that's what you compare it to. So what are you going to pick up? Are you going to pick this up or are you going to pick an HW100 up? If you're wandering around, if you're maybe a little bit older, um, you want something that after an hour, hour and a half, isn't going to be hurting your arms, you go DRS all day, every day. If you yeah. don't mind doing a bit of target shooting and 
bits and bobs, then oh, it's, it's two, 300 quid more for a it's about 100, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. think it's hard to pass it up. At this sort of price range, if you're looking for a hunting rifle, you want to go out, certainly if you want to go walking out, um, stalking or anything, uh, then I think it's best in this class. I think the walnut makes it quite expensive, much more expensive. Yeah. I'd probably go yeah. synthetic, personally. Yeah. But yeah. And there's one thing. And that there's one thing that uh, is quite a. It's, you've got a couple of things that are new. You've got the over, the over barrel cylinder, and you've got the plenum, the plenum chamber underneath, haven't you? Yeah. We don't know how they're going to stand the test of time. No. And the we're plenum there is exposed. Yeah. If you hit it, is it going to break? Well, there's four Allen screws in there, isn't it, holding it in? Yeah, it looks like solid aluminium mm. uh, unit, so probably not, but. Is, uh, internals, is it going to shock them or anything? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, so uh, we, we can only really be first impressions, can't we? First impressions without the proper magazine yeah. and without the instruction manual. It's a bit of a shame, a bit of an oversight. Yeah. Oversight, a bit rushed maybe. Think? I think you said earlier, didn't you? It's a, a, a rushed production. Yeah. Probably, probably to get it out for the British Shooting Show. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, Earworth, the, the show in Germany. Yeah. So, but overall, I think, best in class. That's bold. It's certainly a lot... You can certainly feel the difference up in quality from the the new Rex Mexes, uh, the Remingtons and that sort of thing. It's a big jump up in quality. It is. Quite a jump up in price. Yeah, but it's still that sub grand mark. Yeah, which is quite a big, quite a big point for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, you're not going to get you're going to get this in a decent scope. You're not going to get a cylinder with it for under a grand either. No, you? you're going to have to you're going to have to be another fifty to hundred quid to get a cylinder on it. No, but it's still is it age one hundred to ten fifty? Are they? They are. They're over the thousand mark, aren't they? It's three hundred quid cheaper than the yeah. one hundred. 100's walnut stock as standard, but... Thumb hole as well. If you're hunting, does that mean any matter? Thumb holes, thumb holes, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Test of, will it be a test of time for reliability? We don't know, we can't comment. Um, our, uh, FX's track record hasn't been the greatest with us, but we'll see. It's a brand new rifle, it's a brand new setup. Mm. Um, I quite like it to start off with. I quite like it. I think really to... to to do it justice, we're going to probably have to revisit after a few months of experience with them, aren't we? Yeah. I, yeah. I think that would be the fairest. But for first impressions, very good. Mm. Very, very good. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.